Hi, just gonna make a short video about new uh, Russian watch I just uh, got from eBay. It's a Vostok Amphibia 710 Ministry case with the blue, light blue uh, scuba dude dial. I got this watch for $65 uh, shipped from a seller in Russia uh, based in Moscow. And uh, th that seller offered uh, these watches with NATO strap instead of. Uh, instead of the bracelet that these watches usually come with simply because those bracelets are not very good and they are not very comfortable they are hard to size they're cheaply made so i just went with a you know last stock uh, nato strap instead so it comes in you know these last stock plastic boxes it's nothing fancy at all it comes with some paperwork um, instruction manual, which is all in Russian. Specification, I assume. Uh, it's all in Russian. But uh, well, I guess this is the movement 2416B self winding automatic movement. Uh, 200 meter water resistance, yes, 20 ATM. And I assume this is. Uh, this is um, the accuracy range of this watch. It's uh, from everything from minus 20 to plus 60 seconds per day. So the accuracy range is quite wide. But again, this is a cheap mechanical watch. So I only had this one, well, not even a day, I just got this this afternoon. Uh, gonna test it for a week to see how accurate this thing is. To be honest, I'm, I'm happy if this thing keeps within 20 25 seconds i'll be quite happy with it because this watch i bought this because i think it's cool just uh, for the fun of it for cheap uh, i've been curious to uh, check check out these russian vostok watches so so i ordered one and uh, I didn't really expect a lot from this watch uh, when I ordered it, since it was so cheap. And there are a lot of mixed feelings about these watches. But uh, my first impression was actually, when I opened the box, I was like, wow, this thing is actually not bad. I mean, the, the case, the stainless steel case, the polishing is done pretty well. And, and the dial as well. I think it's a pretty uh, nice style, the printing, it's all nice and crisp. And uh, and the hands all line up, no issues there. And yeah, just the blue color is quite nice. Just I'm quite surprised about the uh, build quality of this thing. Of course, it's, it's not a great built i mean say it's not great build but it's, it's great build for the price i would say uh of course you know any seiko divers or some or orient divers are of course are built much nicer but still they cost like twice maybe even three times of this watch so uh, the thing i really don't like about this uh watch is the crown now i knew beforehand about this wobbly thing uh, it's supposed to be a part of the design so it's completely normal it's to protect the uh, the stem from breaking when you, if you accidentally hit the crown but the action just when you, when you wind this thing you ha kind of have to uh, keep the little bit back pressure to, to get it going or if you don't do that it just spins around and do nothing same with uh, when you're setting the time you can't have to keep pulling out a little bit keep a little bit of uh, force on it to to kind of engage the the stem if you don't do that it just you know flops around and do nothing so and uh, this watch does not have quick 
quick date change, so you have to uh, you can do it, do it this way, you know, the really slow way, or you can do do it somewhat faster by going past twelve o'clock, reverse back to uh, eight o'clock, and back to twelve again to uh, change the day. Uh, as you can see, when I turn this, look at the second hand. I mean, this, uh, this movement is, I don't know, <laughs> it's really uh, something on its own. Well, again, sixty-five dollars. Can I really complain? And also the bezel turns both ways. And the action is it kind of grindy, it's not very smooth. It doesn't click uh, either. Uh, I have a Seiko Flightmaster which uh, has a non-clicking uh, slide rule bezel and that is smooth as silk on that on that Seiko watch, but this one is just... Uh. But, uh, but you can... I mean, you, can you really complain about these things when you buy a watch, you know, in-house mechanical watch for sixty-five dollars. Yeah. The case diameter on this thing is uh, forty-one and a half millimeters. The lug width is twenty-two, and uh, lug to lug is supposed to be forty-five. I can also measure it just to. Uh, Make sure it is right. Actually, getting almost forty-two millimeter for the case diameter and the lug width is twenty-two. Lug to lug is forty-four and a half. 44 and a half. So that, this is probably one of the reason I uh, choose this case model because of the short lugs. Is I have very small wrist. I don't want to have long lugs just sticking out. And, uh, I'm gonna measure the case thickness. And take this strap off. His thickness is 15 millimeters, quite quite thick, but that's mostly because of the, this really thick acrylic crystal. Uh, the crystal is uh, acrylic. Uh, it scratches quite easily, but it's also very easy to uh, polish it out with you know a little bit of this poly watch. You wipe it off uh, for five, ten minutes, and it's gonna be good as new. Yeah, forgot to show the case back. Just it's, uh, it's this Swastok two-piece case back design where the case back itself is held down by this retainer ring here. Uh, this was the reason why they choose this uh, kind of design is because uh, the water pressure actually uh, help uh, the watch to to get a better seal. Because the deeper you go, the more pressure is on the case back here. It compresses and creates a tighter seal. So it's a little bit different from, uh, well, pretty much all other waterproof, uh, water resistant watches out there on the market. Just gonna put it on my wrist. I'm gonna put this strap back on. Gonna take a wrist shot. I got a uh, very small wrist, very, really, I mean, really small. I got 15.2 centimeter wrist, it's about 6 inches, I believe. So it might appear huge on me, but in person it doesn't actually look, they look too big because of the short lugs. So, uh, you know, I really like this watch. I think it's, uh, it's a cool thing to have. It's also 
has a cool history behind the design of these uh, amphibia watches. And I'm not gonna ramble off and the whole story behind these watches. There are many great articles online about the design and the engineering behind these watches. It is quite interesting. So if you're really interested in that, you can find uh, those articles online. Also, the second hand is because it's it's a very low beat movement. I think it beats at uh, nineteen thousand eight hundred beats per hour. So it's even slower than most Seiko watches, which runs at 21,600. So it's not a super smooth on second hand, but it's not too bad. Again, for $65, I think uh, it's a cool watch. If I'm... Would I recommend this one? Well... If you want something really unique and uh, very with a very special quirky design, yeah, not many. You're probably not gonna see many people wearing Vostok watches. So, but if you're gonna buy your first decent, you know, mechanical watch, I probably go uh, with uh, Seiko Five. Or if you can afford it, you, sh I'd probably go with an Orient Mako, Orient Ray for around 150 uh, if you can spend $50 more get an SKX or even a Seiko Monster those are much better watches than this one but again they cost a lot more so but, uh, but if you want something really unique with a cool history behind it and it's completely in house I mean, in-house watch for $65. It's pretty cool. So here it is, my Vostok Amphibia. Thanks for watching.